Services are so important as a way to differentiate. When your product is perhaps pretty well matched by competitors, what can you do to be better at service? And many books on service and many subtle things. I like, I happen to like what Len Berry has done with service. Len Berry, uh, Leonard Berry is one of our great academics. He's at Texas A&M. And he has a, a book called The Soul of Good Service. Uh, he has another one that has 13 or 14 companies he, he studied, took apart, and said, boy, are they phenomenal. You could learn so much from those companies. And they're in, one's a bank. One is a company that makes containers uh, for your home. I mean, shelves and other things. Uh, but the, la the latest thing that Len de did was he wanted to find out what makes a a hospital work and be excellent. How can a, a medical service be excellent? And he chose to study what he heard was the best system we've got, and that is the Mayo Clinic. When people really are sick and they can't figure, and, and the normal doctor doesn't know the answer, you go to Mayo Clinic. Mayo is uh, north of, uh, in Minnesota, north of Rochester, the city of Rochester, Minnesota. In any case, um, you know what he did? He, he worked with Mayo and they agreed to work with him and uh, he acted as a patient. He, uh, he was in a bed. He, he, in other words, it's a way of studying a situation where you disguise yourself and you become the customer. And he watched everything done from the moment he'd ring the bell for service and how fast the doctor would come. And he just is about to, the book is finished. It's going to be nationally advertised in a few weeks called The Mayo Clinic, the story of a great host, host, uh, medical system. And I, I, I endorsed it. I read the book, and my God, any hospital ought to read this book about how you really can deliver good service. So service is, is, is key when the products themselves are pretty similar. Uh, Home Depot as a company that sells uh, paint and uh, plumbing and electrical supplies, they, 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 when they started out, they had actual painters selling the product, actual electricians selling electrical items, and so on and so forth. And then they offered, would offer a free workshop once a week on one topic or another, like if you were going to you wait until they're going to have their painting seminar, you know, helping you choose the best paint. In other words, they're creating value in use, not just value in purchase, but value in use. So what are you doing for the buyers of your product? For example, if I bought a car from uh, the Cadillac company uh, in Dallas, Texas, there's a dealer there <coughs> who's fabulous. If anything goes wrong with the car, I think he drives a new car to you rather than you driving it in and, and gives you the loaner for as long as you need it. He sold you a, a $50,000 car or whatever it costs, and he wants to make that work for you. That's his promise. Um, so we have examples like that. And, and Kodak is doing something. Of, about after service, about training, so is uh, Apple Computer. So strong brands supply use value as well as purchase value. And you've got to ask yourself if, if you're really helping people get the most out of what you sold them. Now, one, one of the last things I'm going to say is that a company's brand uh, is not on the balance sheet, the value of the brand. In fact, the company's balance sheet is often a lie. Uh, because it leaves out the thing. Here, here's how we know that. If the company has public stock, look at what is called market capitalization, which is the price of the stock today times the number of shares. That is the capitalized value of the company in the minds of the public owned stock. Um, and then look at the book value of the company. And you'll always find capitalized value is much higher than book value. So something isn't accounted for. And Several things aren't accounted for. Uh, the value of the employees is not reflected on the books. You know, two companies may have sets of employees, and one set are motivated people, very uh, qualified and competent, and another not, as, not so much that. 
Uh, the value of the customer base, the value of the channel relationships, I would score Caterpillar is very high on channel relations because the dealers love Caterpillar. The Caterpillar dealers love Caterpillar and vice versa. The intellectual capital, which will be the patents and other things, are not on the books. And, of course, the big thing, I think, is the brand value, the brand equity. So balance sheets are a lie.